Okay, unit two, lesson, unit three, lesson two, uh, aggregate supply. We just did demand. If you didn't go over demand, please go back and watch the video. Unit three, AS, uh, the total amount of goods and services, or real GDP, total amount of real GDP, an economy produces at different price levels. Okay, total amount of goods and services an economy produces at different price levels. So you have two curves, and this is where it gets a little tricky. AD is one curve, only one curve. It's always downward sloping, and it always shifts with the four components of aggregate demand. Aggregate supply has two different curves, one in the short run, one in the long run, and they have different shifters. So you're going to have to do a little more studying for aggregate supply. So, what is, so let's start with the short run. Okay, short run is the most basic one, and the, the curve looks like the one you saw before, upward sloping. So what happens in the short run? Please write this down. Super important. In the short run, aggregate supply, Wages and resource prices will not increase as price levels increase. In other words, wages and resource prices are sticky. That's literally the term that Keynes came up with. Wages and prices are sticky. They don't change right away. They only change in the long run, which we'll see. In the long run, wages and resource prices will increase as price levels increase. They're not sticky. Okay. So the short run, you have sticky prices, sticky wages. In the long run, you have no sticky prices, no sticky wages. That's the main difference between the two. Okay? Now, over here, first thing we're going to talk about is... All right? The short run. So, the short run, we have wages are sticky, prices are sticky. Here's an example as to what I mean by all that. This firm, I'm going to use the same example for both. This firm makes 100 uh, units or quantity of this particular good, and it sells for $1 each. So the total revenue is 1 times 100 is 100, right? $100. The labor cost to produce it is $80. So the profit is total revenue minus cost, $20 profit. Simple. Let's say what happens at the short run, in the short run, if price doubles for the good. So instead of $1, it's going to be $2. Well, if it's $2, then the price is going to sell for a total revenue of 100 goods times $2 is total revenue is 200. So what's my profit now? 200 minus 80 is 120. So profits are up. Why? Because wages stayed at 80. So there's a profit to be made. Now, what happens when there's profit to be made? With higher profits, firms have an incentive to increase production. So firms own. Oh, Higher money being made, so they'll, they'll possibly increase production. Now, what happens in the long run? Well, same example. In the long run, wages and prices, they adjust. They're, they're, they're not sticky. They're adjusting with, with the change in price. So a firm, in this case, $100 minus 80, they were making 120 profit. And then what we say, what happens at the long run, what happens to the long run, uh, supply if price doubles. So the same exact example, price doubles. So now the price of the good is now $2 times 100. So now total revenue is 200. However, what has changed? The labor costs are going to adjust. They're not stuck. So in the long run, why is that? The workers demand higher wages to match the price change. So labor cost also is going to double in the long run. Instead of it being 80, it's going to be 160. So what's the profit now? Total profit is 200 minus 160, which is $40 of profit. Well, wait, 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 Mr. Ryan, you just said the profit was only 20 initially, and then it dropped, went up to 120. Well, in this case, yes, it's not 20, it's 40. But the real profit hasn't changed. In other words, the number of goods being produced and sold and, and paid for has not changed. But the number of values have, and the cost values have gone up just as the price has gone up. So we say that the real profit has not changed. Okay? So what does that mean? Well, if real profit doesn't change, a firm has no incentive to increase production. So in that case you see that the long run aggregate supply is vertical. This is the first curve we've seen that's vertical. In micro, we see lots of vertical curves. We've been used to this, but we didn't do it micro this year. So I have average price level, real GDP, and my quantity is at Y, okay? Generally, I like to put Y at full employment 
But because we don't have the other two curves, the two short run curves, I'm not going to put the y because that tells me my current output is. But what do you need to know about this long run curve? Well, as price goes up, what happens to quantity? Nothing. As price goes down, what happens to quantity? Nothing. So in the long run, just like we said before, wages and prices adjust as price level changes, right? So the quantity is always going to wind up in the long run at this point. What is that point? That's the point of full employment or the natural rate of unemployment or somewhere on the potential GDP. So we assume in the long run, the economy will be operating at full employment and so that's our two points. You're going to see a graph that has an aggregate demand going down, a short and aggregate supply sloping upward, and then down the middle, usually at full employment, is the long run aggregate supply. All right. So before we get to long run, let's look at the short run. Now the short run. So short run aggregate supply, you can memorize it. It's I wrap. Um, write these down in your notes. It's changes in in I right I R A P. Changes in inflationary expectations. You know what that means. If people expect prices to go up, that means prices of all things go up, including inputs. So supply will shift left. If they expect prices to go down for inputs, then uh, supply will shift to the right, aggregate supply. Changes in resource prices. You know what these are. These are supply shocks, negative and positive supply shocks. Um, if the price of labor goes down, aggregate supply shifts to the right. If the price of labor goes up, aggregate supply shifts to the left. The price of oil goes up, aggregate supply shifts to the left. If the price of oil goes down, aggregate supply shifts to the right. Number three, change in government action. Pay attention. Government action is not the same as a government purchase. Yes, I know they're both actions, right, by the, by the definition of the word. But in this case, when we're talking about supply, a government action specifically means taxes, subsidies, or some type of regulation not government spending. If government spending increases, and you see that on an exam, that means AD is shifting. In this case, if the government uh, puts a tax on you, subsidizes, that's going to, so they tax something, it's gonna be supply to the left. If they subsidize something, supply to the right, just like when we did the regular supply curve back in unit one. The last one is changes in productivity. This is pretty obvious. If there's a machine that makes you produce more, aggregate supply to the right. If there's a computer virus, aggregate supply to the left, pretty simple. So IRAP, don't forget, write them down if you have it. Now a couple of uh, examples you can practice, and I'm going to go over them. You can pause the video. So the first one, New York Times reports a rise of 25% in prices is expected at the end of the year. If they expect prices to rise at the end of the year, that will increase the labor costs. Aggregate supply will shift to the left. The short run will shift to the left. Number two, new oil reserves are found in Montana. So the supply of oil is increasing. When the supply of oil increases, the price of gasoline goes down. Therefore, the price of transportation costs go down. Nearly every company uses transportation. So input costs are going down. Aggregate supply will increase, shift to the right. This one. Uh, number three, number three, price of labor rises in the US. If the price of labor is going up, input costs are going up, aggregate supply shifts to the left. Government decreases taxes for all businesses. If they're decreasing taxes, that means businesses can invest and spend more in their company. Aggregate supply shifts to the right. A computer virus happens, then aggregate supply shifts to the left. All right, hope that makes sense. Uh, now you can practice the worksheet.